Welcome back to Hebrew Hits. I'm your host, Amalia. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight again. Right now, I have a very special guest who I met on LinkedIn, Rabbi Shmuel Reichman. So I want to really talk about your story because it's a very powerful story. For the people who do not know, um, you had a lot that happened in your life and you are actually right now literally like not staying in that victim mentality that you could have. People that go through struggles, they sometimes feel that they're stuck there. They feel that they can't get anywhere in life because this happened to them. But you literally pulled yourself out of that and you're succeeding every single day and overcoming those challenges. So would you share with the audience what you've been through? I'd love to. And I'd like to start off by kind of framing it in a way which has become my life lifelong passion because I'm going to share my story, but every time I share my story, people think that you have to have a story like this to think that you have a story. Okay. Right? And, and then it's, it's like, I just want people to frame it with, you also have a story and start understanding what your story is. And the reason why I started writing my stories because I started realizing I had a story to tell. So for me, m telling over your story really means telling over your whole life story. You can't put it in a box, seven minutes doesn't do it justice, neither does five, three, two. Yeah. But you have to be able to articulate the essential message, the struggle, the overcoming, by the way, like successful people, they're not successful all day, every day. They're also still going through struggles. They're constantly, it might be different. There might be like things that they're, not even yet aware of, but it's the concept of the realization that life is a lifelong struggle, but a lifelong opportunity to overcome and grow from struggle. You know, it's amazing that you're saying that about struggle, because when you said today, who's going through a struggle? My struggle was, when you got off the stage, my struggle was, am I going to be able to approach him to get him on the show? And I said, I don't care, I'm not letting him move two feet off the stage without going up, to, going up and speaking to you after your speech, because it was extremely powerful. And you didn't even come off the stage. You spoke to me from on stage when you're untangling your mic. So I really appreciated you saying that about a struggle, because everybody goes through a struggle every single day. And it's about really overcoming that struggle. Yeah, once you start to realize, now because I'm going to tell my story, once you start to realize the first time you overcome a struggle, First time you overcome fear, the first time you overcome yourself, you start to realize that literally there are no limits to what you can accomplish. As, as corny as it sounds, fear is like false evidence appearing real. Like most fears are illusions we have in our minds, like the fear that you fail, the fear that people will think you're not good enough, the fear that people will judge you, the fear that you're just not capable. All these like fears are illusions, but it's also face everything in our eyes. And it's like, it's, it is corny, but the greatest ideas are also cliched. The only way you can elevate your level of life is if you stop avoiding the things that aren't working. Like, yes, work with what's going well, work with your talents, but you have to face the thing that you don't want to face if you're going to really start, not just like succeeding externally, but living a vibrant, passionate, driven, self-aware life. Many people, they avoid themselves. They, they will alienate themselves from themselves. They create walls so you don't have to face what they know that they don't like about themselves. And they can't like themselves because they're not willing to do the work to actually become the person they know they're capable of. So like, I guess that was a great frame of understanding a story is that what are the greatest stories of all time? The character's life fell apart. Everything wasn't going well. They thought things would go better, it didn't. They're, that's the start of every great story. And what happens? They go on this quest of self-exploration, figuring out how to turn everything that was the worst into the best. And most people, they don't want to live that story even though they do. Like when you read a novel, you watch a movie, you want to be that main character, but like you go to work every day, you're in school, you eat your food, you go to the bathroom, you go to sleep, you do it again, and like where's the drive, the ambition, the excitement, pushing yourself, seeing what you're capable of, trying to explore your mind, understanding how you think, how you learn, where's the drive to actually be the main character of your story? So most people are waiting, waiting for permission to be the main character of their story. So before we get to your story, how do you find that about yourself? Where do you go? Do you go on a run? Do you think? How do you find all that information out? 
So it's a combination. Uh, first of all, you want to find works best. So for me, so many ideas come when I exercise, exercise every single day. So many come when I'm thinking about a related topic and something clicks. So many come when I'm journaling, when I'm writing, when I'm preparing a speech. When you're activating your conscious and unconscious self, when you're really tapping into a flow state, when you're when I'm writing music or playing music, when you know, I'm having a really meaningful conversation with someone, you enter a state where you are present with you. And most people don't know who they are. They have no idea who they are. They have no idea why they do what they do. And that prevents them from even creating concrete goals because they don't even know what it is that they want to accomplish so they can't even have the courage to express it because they've never explored who they are. So for me, it's a combination of always feeding yourself externally, feeding ideas, feeding yourself, like surrounding yourself with great minds, great people, but then also having, and this is something which takes time and skill, is building the consistent desire to spend time with yourself. Because once you spend time with yourself and you get to know yourself, you have conversations mm -hmm. with yourself, and you stop living your whole life to impress other people, but it's always inside out, it's always I'm expressing who I genuinely am, so I want to discover who yeah. I am, that's when you start, that's where everything changes, and self-awareness is the name of the game. It's an interesting point you're talking about self-awareness, like some people that really don't, I know that you're saying spend time with yourself, but really, someone could spend time with themselves, and they could just be thinking about, let's say, the chandeliers that are in this room, or the chairs, how do you really find out who you are from deep inside, from being with yourself? Asking the right questions. To yourself? To yourself. To yourself. So what are those By right the way, questions? The way that expression works is that there's this just boundless self. And then you have articulated thoughts, you have emotions, you have your physical body. Now, you can affect all of them by affecting something else. So, for example, you start jumping up and down, you feel like energetically excited, you start feeling good, right? That affects your state, right? You start thinking good thoughts, you start thinking positive thoughts, confident thoughts, you start affirming yourself, you feel good, yeah. right? Both affect that emotion. You learn how to tap into, like, what opens up your mind. It works okay, different so for that's everybody. What it is. So, you want to find what, what questions, what ideas, what topics, what, what allows you to say, like, you feel like almost this electric pulse where things start to flow. And a lot of it is asking very, very simple questions, like, what's my purpose in life? Then no one has the answer to that right away, but then you're saying, like, why do I do what I do? Like, why do I have these friends? Why do I wear these clothes? Why do I show up every day doing what I do? Just start asking why questions, because why will get you back to, okay, it's because I want this. Mm -hmm. Okay, why do you want that? Like, you want right. to be financially successful? Why? Because I, I want to have, I want people to like me. Why do you want people to like you? Because then maybe I'll like myself. So why do you want to like yourself? Because then I'll be happy. Why do you want to be happy? I want to be happy. Did you ask her for seven whys? Because there's something called the seven so whys. So everyone, there's a whole, everyone you know? has their own okay. why, why challenge. But whys get you back to your root. Everyone wants to be happy. But the people think, the problem isn't what drives people. The problem is what people think will satisfy the drive. So... Everyone wants to be happy, but people think if I'm you know, famous, I'll be happy. If I'm financially successful, I'm happy. If I have great marriage, I'll be happy. If I'm religious, I'll be happy. If I have great friends, I'll be happy. If I do this, if I do that. Everyone has their ultimate like list, of their laundry list of things they want yeah. to do. But the tried and true answer, which everyone really thought out will tell you, is that when you are in touch with yourself, living your purpose, living your purpose, not achieved, living, as in the journey itself towards actualizing your potential, yeah. which is unique, which is, means that you think differently than other people, you learn differently, you experience differently, you are literally your own mini universe. Yeah. That's when you unlock the concept of happiness, which is not, I've accomplished a check, it's a state. It's a state of meaning, of purpose, of it will get you through the challenge, it will help you overcome the challenge, it will give meaning to the challenge, will, you will realize as you're going through it that you're only really accomplishing your true potential because of the challenge, not despite it. Most yeah. people think you become great despite your challenges, or at least because you overcame them. No, it's not because you overcame them that you became great. It's the literal challenge itself that unlocked who you were supposed to be. That's the Ramban, famous Nachmanides, talks about how God sends you challenges to allow you to access and actualize your potential. Wow. Which is like, it wow. changes your life. Most people yeah. think, like, challenge is just the, like, the worst part of life. Pain, challenge, I like to say that suffering is meaningless pain, and okay. pain is meaningful pain. Pain is meaningful pain, that's so interesting. As in, 
everyone is in pain. Everyone has pain points, things that they're struggling with, things that they want to overcome, whether it's build a great relationship, figure out how to get out of debt, connect with themselves, connect with a, you know someone who they've lost touch with, get an incredible physical health and vitality and energy, figuring out their emotional struggle. Everyone has things they're struggling with. And when you learn how to transform pain into the opportunity, yeah. you start living, because like, no one is ever going to escape the pain. Right. Everyone's like, you know, looking for that golden answer. Yeah. The golden answer is use it. Yeah. Use and that's it. why I'm very happy that you're on the show because your actual pain is literally making who you are. But before I before we talk about your challenge, one word answer. Are you happy? I would say that's more I'm on the journey of becoming happier because you're never happy. That's the also the fallacy of the word happy. Happy is just literally it's letters. Yeah. It means something different to everybody. I like to think of happy as a state of increased walking into your true self. And so let's say I'm on that journey. Amazing. So now let's talk about your story. <laughs> so I'll tell you the, the short version of the story just because the long version is, is many, many years. But the short version is that I was a very normal kid. Okay. And I wanted nothing other than to be normal, to fit in. I had very decent goals. And when I left high school, I went to Israel to study in Shaladin for a couple of years, and my life fell apart. And it fell apart in multiple ways. The first way is that I had you know, a level of heartbreak, and I lost the ability to speak. So, Do you think that? Is because of the heartbreak? No, no, no. nothing to Two, do. Very, okay. I just packaged them together because the third one is so much bigger. Okay. That those were like two things I was struggling with. So I felt that essentially broken, and I literally was finally intellectually blossoming and growing and thinking to start to be creative, and I lost the ability to speak. And you don't understand how powerful something is until you lose it. Imagine not being able to freely communicate. It's crazy. I literally had to choose. Every time I spoke, it felt like a dagger was stabbing my throat. So I had to choose every single word I spoke. And I really had to start avoiding conversations. And I had to start thinking about what was worthwhile talking about. What wow. was worthwhile talking. And when you measure every word, you value. Speech. So now, the way to really value ideas is to value speech because you start thinking a lot more. And... I became so much more thought out, so much more self-aware, so much more calculated with everything. And then I start to value speech, value what it can do, value what it shouldn't do, value what's worth talking about. And, and they say that small people talk about things, smaller people talk about people, and great people talk about ideas. Yes. And I start to fall in love with ideas and wisdom and concepts and brilliance and what ideas can do for you. and. You know, it's, it's it's an easy way to, to alienate people because yeah. not everyone wants that. So was there texting at the time that you weren't able to speak? Yes, yes, there was texting. So you're able to communicate. That I was way. able to communicate that way, but from when you love something, you want to share it. Yeah. So when you love, you love talking to people you love because that's the real form of connection. Yeah. And all other forms are secondary. So it was the biggest struggle, but the real struggle came when my life really fell apart. My life really fell apart, and it all happened, like, these things kind of all happened at once. Oh, no. So it's crazy, right? Like, your life, you're a normal kid, you're just not really striving, and you just want to, you know, get by. All of a sudden, these crazy things are happening. So one day, I felt this pain in my stomach, and this pain stretched from my stomach to my head, and I passed out. And I didn't just pass out. I felt this struggle to come back to consciousness, like this painful struggle in I was terrified, I thought I was dying. Oh my gosh. And I went to the doctor and they had no idea what it was. I thought it was a fluke accident, maybe I eat something wrong, whatever. It happened the next week. And the week after that. And for like months this was happening, and I had no idea why I was losing consciousness. Every single time I thought I was gonna die. And I was just crying out to God. Did you have any like dying like 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 visions? No, it, it was, was, it was weird. Like, no, like coming back to consciousness, there was like, you know, like when you have a, you know, some people can't remember their dreams, some okay. people can. So there was like this conscious state of like, I can't fully come back to consciousness. But I was conscious of the fact that I couldn't come back and I was trying and I couldn't. It was, it was this, like a sleep paralysis? 
I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what okay. actually it was in a okay, couple okay. of minutes. <laughs> but it was the it was the strangest thing, and I genuinely every single time thought I was dying. And I didn't know what to do. I was like, I'd cry out to God, so I'm like, why are you doing this to me? Like, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not trying to hurt yeah. anybody. I'm just trying to get by. And you're literally like, just like, I'm not ready to die. I don't want to die. Yeah. And this started happening all the time, and I began asking the types of questions that kids who are 17 even don't ask. Like, you were 17, 18? Yeah. Wow. And I started to ask, why am I here? Like, what's my purpose in life? What have I done? Like, I literally thought that I could die any day, so I started to say, like, what am I doing with the time I love? Wow. And, like, that was the worst and best And you're still thing. not able to speak? No, so now I am. Speaking... All those things passed. Oh, okay. Then this has happened after. Okay. Oh, so I, no, you're saying I'm at saying this stage, I felt that you oh, can't at this stage, speak. I still couldn't. You so still couldn't then, talk. This, so remember, I could talk. It was extremely painful. Right. Okay. So I was like, I don't know if you eat colas. I was eating colas all day, every day. I was fed <laughs> everything and anything that could soothe my throat. It was this con- like no release, constant pain, and just aggravated when I tried to talk. And all these are overlapping, right? Because all these are happening at the same time. I'm just thinking, like, this is the, like, this is the worst. Mm-hmm. And it turned out to be the very best thing that ever happened to me, without a question. How is that? Because the reason why I'm the speaker I am today is because of the value I give to speech. The reason I built the most amazing marriage and care about genuine connection and have built myself from the ground up is because I'm not broken. Wow. Think, about, think about the fact that... In order to build yourself, you have to be aware, conscious, intellectually mature, but most people are so developedly undeveloped at that point, like they have relationships, they're stuck in what they're doing, they don't have the courage to get out of it, they're, they don't have the willingness to break themselves down to rebuild themselves up. And I didn't get to choose, I had it done for me. At 17 years old. At 17, old. and the fact that I question my own existence, why I'm here, what I can do with my life, I started to seek out mentors and teachers and relating and coaches. And I started reading everything and feeding myself content and ideas. I started figuring out talents and skills I had. I started living with a sense of ambition and passion. And like, it never stopped. Even though I was able to figure out what I had was something called Vesa Okay. And it's something which, like certain things cause your body to just shut down. And it's not dangerous as long as you don't pass out while you're standing up. You can also try to prevent it if you know what's causing it. You're but saying if you would know it's coming on, you, you know it's coming down. on. You can. So yeah. what are some signs that it? Then you start to like basically just feel extremely weak and dizzy. Okay. And you start. To, like, you, you kind of get a sense. It's hard to describe, but you know it's coming. It's okay. like when you feel hungry, you know you're hungry. You know when you feel yeah, something yeah, coming yeah, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. it starts to come on. So that kind of dissipated to a point. Like I was able to. It's no longer like a fundamental existential struggle in my life. There have been times where it's still coming on, and I've been able to deal with it. But the drive and the passion and the excitement for growth, the desire to become great, and really the fundamental desire to change the world, to inspire the world, to help people elevate and find out what they're truly capable of, that never stopped and that just elevated. And that's become so important to me is to help people understand, number one, you have a story. Number two, it's a story worth understanding. Number three, it's a story worth telling. And number four, you are who you are because of your story not despite all the struggles and challenges you have, and start embracing the things that you think are your most vulnerable weaknesses, because that's where you're gonna shine. That's so amazing. I, like, I love your story. Before these things happened to you, did you ever want to inspire the world? No. No? What did you think you were gonna do with your life? I was gonna be a doctor. You were gonna be a doctor. Mm-hmm. And now instead of fixing people's I always say physical bodies, that. You're fixing their spiritual souls. So I would qualify it. First of all, I'm getting a PhD, so technically I'll be a doctor. Okay. But for me, it started, I'm no longer going to be a physical doctor, I'm going to be a spiritual doctor. And then it became... Oh, going, I said that. I know, but then it became yeah. that I'm going to be like a truly integrated oneness doctor. And I don't oneness? see this. Oneness. Okay. As in, not body, not soul. For me, life is about integration. Okay. So you can choose one area of life to master in, or you can master in life. Itself. So That's spiritual, amazing. intellectual, emotional, physical, financial relationships, there are categories of our life and most people are doing well in one, two, maybe three and they're just struggling in others. So if you're doing so well financially, how's your marriage? If you're doing well in your marriage, how's your physical health? You're exercising, you're doing very well in your physical health, how are you doing in your spiritual life? Are you learning, are you feeding your yeah. mind, are you growing? 
to really build a system of success means to strive for true greatness, which means trying to figure out who you are and becoming the greatest version of you. So for me, like, yes, I'm an intellectual and I'm a philosopher, but physical health, I don't. Like, I exercise every day. And that's where something incredible happens, yeah. where you're able to not be an extremist in one. Extremism is great as long as you're extremely balanced. Like, that's the only extreme that works because then you're able to say, I'm not choosing A or B, I'm choosing both, and that creates C, which is so much greater than some of the parts. Yeah. So that's like real, real, real greatness is synthesis. It's not choosing one over another, but figuring out how to blend them both. Because at the end of the day, life is not about only money. Life is not about only family. Life is not about only physical health. Health. Life is about as in a whole. As a whole. So, what well, I love that you shared that because some people they just wake up in the morning. Some of them don't even eat breakfast, they just go to work and then they make money, go to sleep and then what is their life? It's a hamster wheel just to make money and die? But what you're saying is like you literally are building a life and that is so, so important. I want to thank you for coming on Hebrew Hits tonight. It's been a pleasure. Your story is literally amazing. It's really, it's what you do with what you have that makes a difference and you've made a difference because you changed your entire life by using your struggle and using the challenge Hashem gave you and you said it's the best thing that ever happened to you. So if more people would be like you and see the challenges that Hashem gave them as the best thing that has ever happened, we will see so much shefa, bracha, and amazing things in their life. So I just want to say thank you so much for sharing that and for being on the show tonight. Pleasure's all mine. I'm looking forward to keeping in touch and striving together. Yes, thank you so much. I'm your host, Malia. You just listened to Hebrew Hits Podcast with Rabbi Shmuel Reichman. Please go subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hebrew Hits Radio, and we are available on Instagram and Facebook at Hebrew underscore hits. You can follow me and ask me any questions on LinkedIn at Molly Feibelson. Do you want to plug yourself? Sure. You can find me, everything I do, my coaching, my master class for public speaking, for anything that you think I can bring value to you, your community, your industry. Find everything on my website, shmoolreichman.com. Have a great night.